as we've seen already, whenever we want to determine precision, meaning repeatability or within lab long-term reproducibility, it is always important to make many parallel measurements. And in fact, the more we make, the better estimate of precision we get. Now, oftentimes chemical analysis can be quite work intensive, meaning it's not easy to make many parallel measurements, especially not within a short time period. And here, a statistical tool called pooled standard deviation becomes very helpful for us. So, uh, pooled standard deviation can be used both for repeatability and within lab reproducibility calculation. And the main formula of pooled standard deviation calculation is here. So, in the case of pooled standard deviation, we always make measurements with several samples. And in this formula, these numbers here denote the sample numbers. So, we have altogether k samples. And each s is the standard deviation of that particular sample. S1 is the standard deviation of the first sample, S2 of the second sample, and so on. And n's stand for the number of parallel measurements made with those samples. So, all these standard deviations that we get with individual samples, we take to the square, multiply by the number of parallel measurements that were made, minus one, add all of them up, and then divide by this kind of number, which is in fact the sum of all the parallel me measurements numbers, minus the number of samples. And what we eventually get is the pooled standard deviation. The good thing about pooled standard deviation is that you can involve a large number of samples. At the same time, with each sample, the number of measurements can be very small. In fact, it is enough if with each sample just two measurements are made as long as you have many samples. And the number of degrees of freedom for full standard deviation is in fact this number here. So that if we have, let's say, 10 samples, but make with each of them only two measurements, then this number of degrees of freedom will be 10 times 2 minus 10, which is equal to 10. Meaning, it's roughly, statistically speaking, as good as making 11 parallel measurements with the same sample. So, even though each of those standard deviations, which are found from just two parallel measurements, is very, 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 very unreliable. But if we have many of them, and we average them according to this formula, then the resulting pooled standard deviation will be quite reliable, in fact. It is important that all those samples that we carry out the measurements with have to be similar, so that it has to be expected that their standard deviations are roughly comparable, roughly the same. If the samples have very different concentration levels, very different matrices, very different level of difficulty of sample preparation, then the resulting pooled standard deviation will not carry much meaning. Now, on the other hand, if we compare standard deviation that is obtained as a pooled standard deviation from a number of different samples, with, in the case where with all the samples we make not so many parallel measurements, or in the second case where we have just one single sample and we make a large number of measurements with that sample, then in fact the pooled standard deviation can give us more reliable precision estimate because the properties of the slightly differing samples will all be taken into account so that the pooled standard deviation indeed will be an average standard deviation 
over all these samples. And secondly, usually those standard deviations are found on different days, meaning on one day perhaps our instrument is in better working order, on the other day it's in slightly worse working order. Again, the resulting pooled standard deviation gives us the average situation in our lab. If we make standard deviation determination on just one day, with just one sample, then it can well happen that this particular sample is a specifically good sample and the instrument on that day can be in a very good working condition which can result in a very low standard uncertainty which is a repeatability standard uncertainty in this case and this can give us too optimistic estimate for the future use because whenever we determine such standard deviation we do this for using it in the future for some measurement uncertainty calculation. In a contrast, pooled standard deviation gives us the average situation in our laboratory and is in fact more reliable in that respect. We see from this formula that with every sample we can make a different number of measurements. On one sample we can make maybe two, with the other one five, etc. And this is fully okay. These different standard deviations then will be taken into account by different weights. So all these n minus ones here can be regarded as different statistical weights. If, however, the measurement was organized in such a way that the number of measurement with each of the samples was the same, then the formula becomes simpler and the numbers of measurements can be omitted altogether. I mentioned that both repeatability and within lab long-term reproducibility can be evaluated with pooled standard deviation. And let us see now how to set such experiments up in practice.